What is liberal arts education? Well, that's a very good question uh, because people that used to write about liberal arts education do not really agree with each other. Uh, when you read what they are saying side by side, they are talking about something, it's clear that they care about this stuff, but this stuff is not the same for each of them. I think I agree with, uh, with my former supervisor Thomas Norgard, who believes that, well, that there is only a reason to talk about liberal education if it is somehow connected to the freedom. And that means that it's either for the people who are free, or it expresses the freedom of those people, or that it makes a person who is not free, suddenly free. Uh, so, but this is a, a kind of a philosophical understanding uh, that can be used for some, some divisions between whether you are talking about a real example of liberal arts education or a fake one, uh, or an abuse of the, of the concept. But it doesn't really tell us, when you look at the program, whether this program fits that, right? It's, it's a matter of judgment rather than internal construction of the program. Historians who have been working on liberal arts education uh, as, an, as a topic, as, a, as an idea that was changing throughout the history, do not agree with each other as well. So, for example, uh, Bruce Kimball has written a book called Orators and Philosophers about the, the split from the very start of liberal arts education in the ancient Greece, the split between the orators who believe that liberal education, yes, it is for the free people to develop logos in the sense of speech, in the sense of their oratorical skills, in the sense of their ability to convey a message to a community. Uh, whereas philosophers were saying liberal education is about logos, but in a different sense, in the sense of reason, in the sense of permanent and never-ending pursuit of truth. And there were many differences between those two groups and the whole confusion, Kimball argues, uh, the whole confusion about what liberal education means goes back to the ancient Greece and to this, this ambiguity in the essential uh, early on meaning. But for example, Sheldon wrote that uh, does not really agree with, with Kimball's reconstruction. He believes that it's kind of too simplistic and because actually there were more than two and they are not so evenly split that you can just tell the whole story by saying those were understanding in this way and those in the other way. He's saying there were at least six different themes of liberal education and at certain points there could have been more than one theme that people believed in. A lot of those themes uh, have actually been, been developed very, very recently. So for example, the, the idea of, of uh, critical thinking was not there for the liberal education in the ancient Greece, not, not in the sense that we, that we presume right now, because it's connected to, to certain skills required in the modern democracy, and there, there were no modern democracies in the ancient Greece. Uh, but on the other hand, for example, the idea of a holism and character formation, the idea that a person should be a well-rounded citizen that is prepared to have a conversation on a range of topics and understand their place, in the world, in the society, and their, and their mind. This idea goes back to the Greeks for sure. Uh, there were some other ideas, there was the idea that it's leadership, there was an idea that it's personal development. Those are two different themes, those two different understandings of the goals, and therefore also the means to achieve a liberal arts education, whether you are preparing a future leader of the society or whether you are preparing somebody who can be a literary scholar. It's not leading anyone but they both might need liberal education. And if you believe that the goal of liberal education has been changing, or there have been competing goals of liberal education, you can easily see why there is confusion right now. And to take a modern example, I've, this last, last year, uh, Amer Association of American Colleges and Universities, which is the biggest uh, voice defending liberal education in the US, uh, has issued a new definition of liberal education. They used to have one uh, for the past seven years. They decided it's no longer reflective of what liberal education is and how it should be described to the society. Right now they are saying it's all about integration. It is about the integration of what's happening in the curriculum with what's happening, as they could say it, co-curriculum, which we would understand as what's happening on campus, what the students are doing beyond their classes. It's per se a concept that is not easily translatable to countries where there is no idea of a campus in, in that sense, no expectation of a campus at least. Uh, that it's an integration between the academic and experiential, so between learning courses for the sake of learning through knowledge, acquiring knowledge and skills, and 
courses in which there is an in important component of learning is application, is doing stuff with your hands, it's understanding how things work in the real life, not in the classroom. Uh, so this type of an integration. And lastly, the uh, AAC and you also argues that there are at least three different sets of learning outcomes that are specific to a contemporary liberal arts education. That a person who graduates with a degree from business won't have a particular competences that a person who graduates from a liberal arts institution will have. Uh, and one of them pertains to the world of work. Uh, and they argue that there are certain qualities of mind or skills that can be transferable between different contexts that are developed well in the context of liberal education, but not in the other ones. And here we have a strong tension with what I started from, the idea of being a free person, because for the Greeks, a free person is somebody who is not working, who will never work, and their education is not here to be more efficient, faster uh, employee on the market. It's not even the idea of becoming more effective businessman. It is an idea that this is an education for your free time, not for doing something in your main life, because in your main life you are just not earning money. Uh, secondly, they are arguing that the liberal education has certain, certain learning outcomes that pertain to the world of citizenship, that it has qualities that make you a good citizen of a modern society, although we will disagree what those, what those things are, but there are certain skills, for example, uh, tolerance, understanding of different perspectives, critical thinking, all of that, that make you a better citizen. And lastly, there is the, the idea that, there is, that uh, liberal education doesn't prepare you just for the next five to ten years of your life. That it prepares you for the whole of your life and that learning how to become fulfilled, learning stuff that will make you happy for the longer term, learning things that will be useful for you, not for, for any particular a line of engagement that you that you will be, but but to kind of creating a complete human being, uh, there is this this type of uh, an idea about the learning outcome specific for liberal education as well. My problem with this definition is that it is not specific in the sense of where can we find this liberal education or how should we know when we look at something that is called liberal education whether that's happening or not. Uh, by, by this definition, liberal education can happen at any level of education, it can happen in any type of institution, it can happen in any language, it can happen in, uh, in a range of ways, and as long as somebody is claiming that this is what they are doing, well, they, there is never a way to, to say whether, uh, whether they're, they're, they have an implementation problem, so they mean well, but it's just not working, or maybe the whole idea is wrong. Uh, it's a, it seems to me that this interpretation is a bit generic because it's necessary for the pluralistic landscape of the US, but it doesn't help people in countries where liberal education is not an established practice uh, to explain to others why we need it. It is also not very helpful to explain to people who are skeptical about liberal education why uh, we should stop doing what we are doing and start doing something like that. And I think a lot of European countries and Russia face this situation in which we need to invent a different ways of, of thinking about liberal education and different way of, um, of arguing for why it should be developed. Uh, in my research I, I have spoken to the first leaders of, that created programs in eight European countries when there were none. And I came to a conclusion that they all didn't agree about the model. They didn't agree about the meaning or some kind of interpretation about liberal education, but what all of them were thinking when they were saying they are for liberal arts education were three things. One of them was ontological complexity. They wanted an education that reflects the fact that the world is complex, not at the rhetorical level, but actually in the curriculum and in the approach to, to the matters that you are learning. And that means that uh, you need to, to develop breath not just to satisfy the needs of your different departments, but you need to develop that because without it you are not going to graduate educated people. Secondly, they all believed in transformative pedagogy, which means that basically you don't achieve learning outcomes. Or rather, it is impossible to predict what the learning outcomes are going to be, and it, there is a very good chance that what the student tells you when they are 19 they want to become is not good for them and it's not going to happen. The point of liberal education is to transform those perceptions. The point of the liberal education has always been to shape a human being into something that they are not, not yet. And I think this is an ambitious model of education that is, is very difficult to square with the consumerist approach, in which you already know what is your set of preferences and you compare institutions to figure out which will give you that for the cheapest uh, possible way. 
And lastly, I think all real liberal education institutions have to be examples of an organizational alternative. And that changes over time and that's different in between different countries, sometimes even between different universities. Uh, because I think liberal education is a calling. And this is a, a, an idea that is not specific, but it is an idea that motivates people to invent something new. And the history of liberal education is a history of those inventions. It's a history of reactions to whatever has universities have become and what we can do about that. And many people were using the tradition, the prestigious tradition of liberal arts education, prestigious and confusing as it is, to convey some, some kind of authority to new developments and innovations that they were happening. And I believe that a liberal arts institution today and especially tomorrow has to be different from what uh, regular universities are and it has to eventually be different from other liberal arts education institutions because it has to reinvent what liberal education is. This is uh, just an, a, a spring, a source that we are using to think about what education should be and how to become a fuller more complete human beings.